we'll move on to the first, the big release this week, really, um, which of unfortunately only me and Tyler watched. George, I think you'll like it. I think you I, will. I think I will. It's so annoying because I, I came home um, Thursday night and theaters in New York City don't, and I don't know if it's the same around you, Tyler, in Arizona, but theaters around me don't start showing films until 3 p.m. But like the really? movies, yeah, but like the movies oh. two hours, I had like my timing didn't line up. So I'm like, literally, if there was a showing at one or 2 p.m. somewhere, I would have been there. And then I came home for the weekend and just didn't want to go to the theater. Not even like major ones. None. None of the AMCs. I, my was like half 10 or something. It, on weekends. Yeah. On weekends, it's all day. But weekdays doesn't no, start until like... three. Really? So it's yeah. So my, the AMCs around here don't start until like two or three o'clock in the afternoon, which is weird. But my other theater chain I go to starts at like 10 a.m. So I usually go to that one. Yeah, like yeah, so annoying. Yeah. Um. Obviously, me and Tyler watched it though. Tyler, I'll, let's be honest. The hype going into this film wasn't high. Um. I think we can. Well, it wasn't, and then it was. Well, like, I mean, it, wasn't it wasn't until like screening when we first started. Got, when we first got right. the the original trailer and the the first batch of posters, Terrible. there was not many people who were excited. I, I think we can all say, you know, we can say shit like. Don't judge a film by the poster, don't judge a film by the trailer, whatever. But we all were judging it. We said it on the podcast as well. It looks shit. It did. It looks cringy. It looked just I've always said that like a mix of, of uh, like high fancy with, with comedy is, is really a really hard thing to, to accomplish. It's a, it's a recipe for disaster in most cases. However, I was really pleasantly surprised. I think you were too, but I'll, I, you watched it a while ago, did you not? Like, yeah, I think I watched it like or two or weeks ago at this point. But, weeks, okay. but yeah, I, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, like you said, like the posters, the trailers, and the, the cast as well was just something that didn't really inspire me to think this is going to be something exceptional. I feel like for me, like Chris Pine, especially since he's like, you know, the lead of this film, even though they're all kind of equal, but I'd say he's like the lead star. Uh, I've, I usually just find most of his films to be very middle of the road. I feel like he's a very just average actor in terms of like the projects he's in at least. Um, but yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. I had a lot of fun with this. Uh, how do you pronounce it? Is it R Reggie Jane Page? Re Reg Reggie Jean Page. Yeah, Reggie Jean French. Page. Yeah. He was yeah, probably yeah. my favorite performance in the movie. And then Justice Smith, surprisingly, which kind of surprised me because like, I saw Sharper, which came out just a couple weeks ago with him, and I, I just didn't. I just haven't loved his performances in general for most things. But for this movie, at least, I thought Justice Smith might have been one of my favorite performances. I thought he was my really funny. Yeah, I thought he really was probably my, probably my favorite here. Um, the the shapeshifter girl, like I don't know, like she, she, her, just like a lot of the scenes her character was in, the way they used her was just like awesome. Um, yeah, just had a lot of fun with this. The set pieces were super cool. The fantasy elements were awesome. Uh, l consistent laughs throughout. A plot that I was engaged with. Nothing like completely blew me away, but there was nothing that was really bad about it. So I think I was just like consistently having a very, very fun time with this. And yeah, I walked away with a 3.5 out of five stars, which is everything I could have wanted and more from this movie. Cool. I couldn't have, couldn't have expected that going into it. So, uh, yeah. And I brought Riley with it as well. And she said that was like, the, she's like, it's been a long time because she, she goes to a decent amount of movies with me. She's like, it's been a long time since I've like, gone to a movie with you that had like that much fun in the theater. So fun movie, thumbs up for me. That's my quick thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, we can go into some spoilers, but there's not really. I, did, I, I didn't see it. Yeah, we always speak to that, right? Um, like, I I had a, probably a little bit of a better time with you, but I'll, I'll give it a four out of five. This is the most I've laughed in a cinema in, in in a good long while, Tyler. You know, the scene, for example, with the graves where they have to ask five questions. That is, was... is that? Do you like that? Damn it! That that was posed. That so that wasn't a that was like in a trailer. And I didn't find that funny. Maybe the it was. Thing. No, it, it might work better when you watch it in the entire. It was. Movie. It's, I don't know. This true. is the thing. The trailer. It. It looks like this. Like, whippy. Like, uh, what's happening? Comedy that you see in a lot of you know Marvel projects stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's. It's really not. It's genuine. Yeah. That to me was like. I'm like. This is just like a, a more. Well, I thought it's that. Fun. Yeah, but it, it's a lot. Okay. It's. Okay. It's. Um. I know it's a lot more intelligent humor. I think. Uh, Tyler, and there was another scene as well when he was singing with the guitar. Uh, I'm trying to think which one singing with the guitar, and they like he was singing with the guitar and he was like, asking questions and they had to kind of slow him down and then it was like a it was like a clone of him. Mm. But yeah, yeah, made me howl. But I I just think it was really fun, man. Like I think I will say one negative for me was they tried to lean too hard into exposition of each character. 
when they introduced each character, they had to try and go into this massive backstory and like tell it to the viewer, which was kind of annoying at points. Um, but I would say like it was just fun seeing these weird characters after every like two seconds. You would go in after every minute and see a new character who was just a weird, wacky design. It kind of lent into the fact it was self-aware. It was silly. It was ambitious. It was humor. And I would actually say, that, Tyler, the action sequences were good as well. I would agree. Uh, can like, we have so a question? That... Yeah. Uh, do you think that like they went into that's me lifting my cat off? Do you? Th I like I like to not see these movies because it's more fun when I get to ask these questions. Do you think they went into this exposition because they thought like Dungeons and Dragons, every character has like an absurd amount of lore and they were like, well, we have to do that as well? I thought so. But then from people I spoke to who actually are players or have played it, some of the stuff wasn't really necessary to the actual game itself. Okay. So I think I think they did, for me anyway, from what I've heard, go too much in detail with the exposition on show. Um, but I mean, counter for that, there was some, I, I like Tyler said, with the cast, I wasn't mm -hmm. that excited by the cast. No. I think Hugh Grant was also really good. I really liked his performance. Yeah. Uh, You're a big Hugh Grant guy, I gotta assume, right? Not really. Really? Mm. No, I, I don't really, I haven't really seen him in like a crazy amount. I think he's like, I just think he was, I think he served the purpose as like the villain. I was about to say then. I was about to say, if you were a big Hugh Grant guy, you gotta watch Loki because you're a big Loki guy and he's in it. If is he not? Yeah, I don't know if you remember Hugh Grant in it, but um, he's in yeah. MCU. Wow. Yeah, yeah, going back to what Cam was saying, so I don't know, like, the, I I get what Seth was saying. There's a lot of exposition in the beginning, but even though this movie's called Dungeons and Dragons, I feel like that just explained the fantasy setting. I don't know if I came away with this with any Dungeons and Dragons understanding or any more knowledge than I walked into it with. It's like, is like this, like if they made like a COD movie, but it's just war. And it's like this is Call of Duty, but it's just war with the same character names. Is that like what this is? It yeah, like track like the movie doesn't yeah. start with like four kids playing a game, a board game, yep. and then they get like transported to this world. Like, which I thought like they might go down that route, like as Zathura, like as Jumanji. Like yeah. so this is a game. It's like oh, it starts with like okay, we're playing this campaign, then boom, the campaign kicks off. But it's like there's just a world we're in. It's just like this is a real I, thing going on. I think apparently with Dungeons Dragons game, they have it's like a relied on it's like a group game. And right. from what I've heard, it, the, the film basically relies a lot on kind of the friendship and camaraderie and like teamwork, right. which I guess is kind of, you know, in, in tune with the game in that regard. But I, I just, I, I found it like, I found a majority of the characters, 95% of them just so likable and just enjoyable to watch. And I, I think even though maybe the dialogue wasn't the best at times, I think it was just an enjoyable scene um, where you're getting these action sequences, which was surprisingly good. And I think the special effects were a lot better than I thought they were as well. I think the special effects, yeah, especially with the transformation sequences, Tyler, with the girl, I think they were really impressive. Mm -hmm. um, no, totally really agree. impressive. Really enjoyable um, as well. And I, so I had a, a really good time. I think Anna, Anna went with me. She didn't like it as much as me. I think it's one of those that will either, it'll work for you. Or you'll, I, I know a few people who really didn't like it because it does rely heavily on comedy. If the comedy doesn't work for you, this film will not work for you because there is a joke every five minutes realistically and there is you know some it does pack a little bit of a punch emotionally but i don't know about you at the end tyler i wasn't really that phased by the the final sequence uh no i it didn't really pull on my my heartstrings that much but i know a lot of people said like you know they came they laughed they cried they had a good time full emotional spectrum um I, yeah i agree with your, what you're saying with the the humor because i feel like there's a lot of like not to be like anti-mcu but i feel like there's some mcu projects where people are like Oh, it's really good, but there's a couple of jokes in there that really like take you out of the moment, or kind of just like oh, wish you wish they didn't throw those jokes in. Whereas this is like, it's jokes in that same tone that the entire movie. So what you're getting in the first ten minutes is what you're going to be getting like the whole movie in terms of like kind of the tone and the elements you're going to be seeing. So it's not like anything will like kind of catch you off guard with comedy because it's kind of been like that the whole time. Um, at this if point, anything, really, it'll probably be sorry, Todd. Go on. Yeah, I was gonna say at this point, are we, we're we're talking spoilers. There's nothing like major to spoil, but it's like. Can can we just like talk about the some plot? Yeah, things? I don't, I don't care. Okay. Um, well, like, it won't, it won't you not see it, you not see it either, George. No, I didn't see it. No, uh, so like, so you know, just give me a thumbs up when you guys are done. Yeah, sounds good. And and I don't even think because at this point I, I saw it like two weeks ago and I really don't even remember like how the movie ends in terms of like there's not a big plot point resolution of some crazy thing. It's like the the campaign gets carried out. I think I really enjoyed with Hugh Grant's character how they did a callback or circle back to the whole trial with the jury and kind of brought that full circle. Um, those scenes are funny, especially yeah, the funny. first Chris Pine one when they broke out. The, and so, yeah. the, the, you know the bird 
who he flies out with, he pushes out the window. Yeah, it just looks absurdly stupid. Don't you yeah. think at the same time? Yeah, but and I don't I, know. It's fun. It was oh, it was so fun. Like stupid yeah. in a way which which was amusing. And I think the, like the, the the outfit design, the costume design there was so funny. I like how you know the people on the the jurors, whatever, and in the court proceedings. They were all so different in looks, mm-hmm. and it was just like it was really likable and funny. But yeah, Karen, what were you saying? Sorry. No, yeah, I was just saying like I, I think it was funny how they went full circle. I really enjoyed that first scene with Chris Pine, where he's trying to get his freedom for for the crime he was brought into prison for, basically trying to get like an early exit from his from his sentence. And basically, they're like, you know, they they set him free, but he wasn't expecting them to set him free, so he breaks out before they even set him free. Um, but the only like spoiler I was gonna say, which again, like literally doesn't spoil anything in the movie, but. That Bradley Cooper cameo, <laughs> so yeah. funny and so it's out a of Bradley nowhere. Bradley Cooper cameo, yeah, it was yeah. So, out he of plays nowhere. Like, he that plays in like an like, elf, like a like a two foot not five. even an elf, like a like a tiny. I don't even know what. I can't see. That's what, what those things are fun in in like these kind of stupid movies, like when they just throw a major actor into a well, silly I, role. I, I didn't actually that. know. I don't think anyone really knew. Is it? It really did catch me off guard. Even though. I'm surprised I didn't hear about it on like film Twitter, you know, because a lot of people have already seen it. And I only so, saw it yesterday. So I'm not even kidding. I'm making a like I, I was just gonna make like a f- my favorite five favorite comic book cameos, and it's only because like I was thinking of the the Brad Pitt cameo in Deadpool two. Seth, you haven't seen it, but he I just he just they're fly they're jumping out of a plane, and there's an invisible man. That's his character. Is just like he's an invisible person, so they're jumping out of a plane, and then he just falls into like electrical wires and dies and it's yeah, just a Brad, it's just a Brad Pitt cameo. So those are those are just fun to me. Like it was that. it was surprising. He's like mm-hmm. a two foot tall. I don't know what he is, Tyler, but he his he has a he's the ex of Michelle, uh, Rodriguez. Michelle Rodriguez, her character who's, who's obviously like, like jacked and a badass huge and tall. Yeah. yeah. And he's and like two, funny, literally dude. two feet tall and he's like sitting in that massive chair with his little legs. Yeah, and they they're like shake hands. And yeah. He's like and then his current girlfriend comes in, who's the same size as Michelle Rodriguez's character, mm-hmm. the same group, whatever. It's like a jacked big woman. Yeah, that was so funny. Um, yeah, but yeah even Michelle mean, Rodriguez, though, like, just, as I mentioned, I thought the whole cast was, like, uninspiring going into it. Like, I was like, oh, I'm not going to expect Anton out of this. But, oh, man, I just, I really dislike her as an actress. I think she's really stinky. Uh, she was my least I... favorite performance in this movie. She was, like, her character, which kind of stinks that her character had so much to do in this movie. But I didn't love her performance. I watched the first two Fast and Furious movies last night. Don't love her performance in those. No, I don't think she's, she's ever good in the first one. No, I like I, uh, she, she's quite shit. I think I like I'm with you. I didn't mind her in this, but I will say, I said to Anna as soon as we left, I was like, she was, for me, easily the weakest of the cast. Definitely, like, definitely. Her line delivery, especially when it comes to some of the jokes, wasn't very good. And you, I think it's hard because... The cast was all surprisingly funny, especially... Uh, sorry, what was his name? The guy in Sharper. What was his name? Justice Smith. He was really funny. He had this kind of comedic wit, and he was hilarious. And I think Chris Pine was... Chris Pine was great. I thought he was really good in this. And I think I agree with you. Chris Pine is in a lot of kind of mediocre projects, but I think he's actually a really good actor, to be honest. Yeah, who just that's exactly what projects. I would say. I'd say his projects are the greatest, but he's I was going to ask, like, where do we feel... What do we feel about Chris Pine? Because I, I feel think, like... I think he's really good. I think he, it takes a lot to be able to do a dramatic role and a comedic role. His comedic um, line delivery in this film was really good, I thought. Really yeah, I th- good. Because, like, he's in Don't Worry Darling, where he's this, like, he was scumbag, good yeah. just, you know, guy. And then he's also in, like, Wonder Woman, where he's this idiot, you know, boyfriend character. And then he's in this movie. He's in a lot of other projects like that, where he's just, like, the idiot guy. And he's funny. I like him a lot. I think for Chris Pine, he's a good actor, but he's just a blockbuster guy. He loves the blockbuster. Star Trek, Wonder Woman, anything that's going to be a big budget, throw Chris Pine into it. And I think for the most part, that's usually why it's like, eh, he was a, it was a fine movie. But, you know. And then, my, and then my last question is, how much honor was among these thieves like was there a, there was a lot of honor, honor. Yeah, okay. there, was there was a lot, lot of honor. dishonor at first as well there was really? some dishonor there was that's what it's built on it's built on dishonor that's, but it gets honorable they're thieves. they're thieves so you but know it does get honorable it does okay. get honorable okay. that is i like line. that um but yeah we don't have to go into too much with it i give it a four out of five tyler gave it a sorry 3.5 what did you give it out to yeah, uh, six point six out of ten, three point five stars, and easily I'd say the best like positive surprise so far of the year in terms of just like low expectations turning into like a very good experience. 
Yeah, I mean, it's currently sat at 3.7 on Loudbox, which is so much higher than I was expecting originally. So much higher. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll leave it there. I think definitely recommend it, watching it if you can. But if you, you know, it relies heavily on the comedy, decide that we will, but it's definitely better than what it looked like off initial impressions. 